I think we can uh, start. So thanks everybody for being here. I'm Eduardo Puglisi, chair with uh, the colleagues at the conference. So just a few words of uh, welcome. Of course, uh, thanks a lot for being here, for animating this conference. That, as you know, is a new conference because there were no uh, international events devoted to, to migrant and plastic in agriculture systems, soil, plant, and food. Uh, so I think we started together something that uh, I hope could be of interest. So <clears throat> on the name of the organizing committee and also of our university, Universita Cattolica, I'm glad to welcome you here. And uh, I will leave um, the floor to my co-chairs, so Professor Ferrante, Professor Federici. Unfortunately, we have also Esperanza Huertalena that is arriving from Aguilinga, but she was a bit later. So the fourth co-chair of my FPS are not present, but uh, she will join the while. So please, Margarita. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Good afternoon. I greet you all at the first international conference on regional plastics in the end of trends and in plastics. It is a great pleasure to be here in the Faculty of the Food Agriculture and Environmental Science in the University Catholica del Salvador. And I especially want to thank uh, Eduardo Guglisi and uh, her colleague, uh, his colleague for involving me in this very important and innovative scientific event. As the scientists and researchers involved in the topic of micro nanoplastics in the attitude chain, we discussed each other over the decades, like the foundations for an in depth analysis and for creating the most important problems to be addressed, and the questions not yet satisfied, attempting to provide answer and outline possible solution. I hope you will interest in stimulating the topics addressed and I wish you to good talk. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Eduardo. Thank you so much. Uh, my very warm welcome to you of being here, and uh, I'm so honored to be involved uh, in this conference. Eduardo, remember your first call. Stefania, we need to do something uh, here in Italy with soils, with microplastics. Uh, no other conferences uh, are ongoing, actually, uh, at least here in Italy. And uh, I want really to say a big thank to Eduardo. He's our fuel and our motor for this conference. So thank you for being involved with me. And uh, from my side, welcome to this conference. Welcome uh, from my side and from uh, on behalf of the cost section priority. I'm here as action chair of the cost section priority. So our first aim is to make people connected and create new networking uh, activities. And uh, I think that uh, this new conference is a very uh, very starting, good starting point for this for this topic, uh, making uh, new connections and growing uh, new ideas. This is my dream and my uh, thank also for uh, uh, to you and of being here. Thank you and uh, welcome to this conference. Okay, so thanks a lot, Stefano. So actually, we're going to need probably few more fuel in a couple of years, but this uh, will be discussed because. Uh, our hope is that we are, that's nothing, you know, we don't have an association, whatever, but we are starting something that is worth uh, going on. So our hope is, since the numbers are quite good, there are many people today, but we are expecting almost double by today, by tomorrow, because the sun will arrive. So we would like to, to build and continue a community and international event devoted to this. And actually, on Tuesday afternoon, after uh, at the end of the conference, we will have a meeting yeah. where everybody is invited, okay? There is no committee or whatever. So. Please also join uh, on uh, Tuesday at 2 o'clock, I guess. Okay, so now I will uh, introduce uh, our uh, invited keynote lecture, who is Professor Daniel Arsenal, that all of you know, and we are really honored and happy to have you here also to give you uh, your great contribution to us. Okay, Daniel, of course, is one of the most renewed uh, and uh, highly cited productive uh, scientists in the world. His expertise uh, is mainly analytical chemistry with really a strong focus on microplastic, starting from the water environment, but also uh, to the soil environment in the last year. Uh, is, uh, as, you, as you know, editor in chief uh, of two main important journals, which are Science of the Total Environment uh, and Current Opinion in Environmental Science and Technology, but also serving uh, in other journals such as Science of Analytical Chemistry. Uh, uh, and so on. He's, uh, he's been and is leader of several uh, scientific new projects like Global Aqua Solutions, Simon Chip. Some of them were also got also involved in the because he got a long uh, uh, 
let's say, a relationship with uh, some colleagues of us, and so we are happy to, to host you again. Uh, it's uh, an extremely productive research, as you know, with uh, more than 1,600 uh, peer-reviewed papers, with many of them focusing on plastic. Actually, I think you are the most productive and most excited also on plastic now. So I think there was no better way really to, to start uh, this conference, and we are really thankful, and we are looking forward to your uh, uh, in our lectures. So thank you, David. The floor is yours. We're going to sit down and listen to you. <laughs> okay, if you want. Do you want a pointer, maybe? Uh, yeah, you, yeah, exactly, because, yeah, this is the only, because, well, there is also a mouse here, but maybe you are better there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thanks to a lot of our visiting invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to be again here at the Second Quarry University, which I keep in uh, Collaborating and uh, coming here so many times uh, with Dr. Ricardo, Marco Trevisano, with Tina Nicoletta, so it's a pleasure for Radio as well. So it's always a pleasure also coming into Italy, you know, we are Mediterranean, so we are, uh, we are more or less, well, we are very close, I should say, in, in many things. So that's very good always to travel to the south and not to travel to central or northern Europe, which is a little bit different, let's, let's call it. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, when I just came here, when I was asked to give this lecture, okay, I did not realize because I had always a busy agenda, and then Eduardo told me, ah, you need to talk also about terrestrial, okay. My talk, it was about aquatic, it was mainly aquatic, although I started to do some terrestrial with my colleagues in China. Then I started to do some literature, research, and of course, I needed to add a few things on terrestrial. And that's, of course, that now I will include this in the presentation, although, I, as I mentioned to you, we started with this in my colleagues in China, and especially also we did some work now starting in Saudi Arabia with this. But basically Chinese, as you know, some of you travel to China, they are very active, the soil group, the uh, microplastics in soil, they are there since already a few years, and they are very, very active, they have books, they have other equipment. Okay, I will try to give you here a general presentation. I uh, you know that many of you are experts, high experts in, in microplastics, so it's a uh, some of the slides may be very general, but uh, anyway, uh, I hope it, uh, it, it helps to the young people at least. There is also, I will also use some slides and material from colleagues from China, from Portugal, from other places. So it's, it's uh, from, from Italy as well, Pastorino, she is doing a lot of orthodox uh, fishes and things, uh, microplastics and fish, and also from Brazil. So basically, uh, well, Ah, sorry. Okay, this is very general. I don't mean this because you already, you know, like when we talk about microplastics, it's very general. It's a statement that is like pesticides. It's very different, different compositions, different forms. I do not want to go much into the data because this is like, you know, telling you something very basic. Sizes, micro nanoplastics, microplastics. So it's it's a whole. Uh, there is from macro to macro nanoplastics. So you know they are being degraded. They are being different because of degradation, and then they come to the to, to the water, to the soil, and then to the to, the, to different places. You know now today microplastics are as everywhere. And uh, as Eduardo mentioned, I'm editor of journals now. Today, every day that I open uh, the computer, the papers coming from microplastic. Everybody, or not everybody, or many people is doing microplastic now. It's a really fashion. No, not a bit a lot. It's a lot of fashion. Uh, okay, my, uh, this is the outline of the presentation. It's a global pollution, some aspects. Uh, I will start with the terrestrial environment, which is your area. Hopefully, I don't make any mistakes, because you know more than myself. Then, uh, about the, the plastic litter and the rivers to the sea and uh, you know the water issue. Another aspect that I wanted to talk is about uh, the green and the chemistry. You know, in the last year, well, green, green has been always there, but in the last year there is a big, a big discussion and we need to go more green. Okay, we can go more green, but we also want to have good results, you know? Uh, and here is a question, is a problem, and, and some of you, I don't know if you in the room, but uh, I will mention his name later. Uh, we have many techniques in microplastics, but we don't have methods. Uh, methods, which are, uh, methods which are available for everybody and 
that you can interact compare other data. You know, if somebody says I have a three hundred particles per, per cubic meter or or, or, or a thousand particles per kilo in soil, and then how can we compare this with another one? Can we really compare, or our methods are, are, are comparable? This we do. This we do because I am coming from an area which is my main. I started working the past with different materials. Do we have those materials? Can we compare the data? Did we organize an interlab study? I will mention a paper on that, and, and you will see. I think it's still, well, I believe still there's a lot of work to be done in the data. Then another topic, which is in a way, which is also I think interesting for microplastic research, is the sorption of pharmaceuticals. But microplastic, as you know, can sort microplastic, can sort my pharmaceuticals, pops of phosphorus and pollutants, and metals. And also pathogens, you know, there are many papers on this. So there is a huge thing, and the microplastic is important, but not, not alone. Uh, microplastic is a cocktail, it's part of a cocktail, and this cocktail is the important thing. And the Codox people, like or Maria Ferrante and other people here, they know that the important is a cocktail, but it's much more difficult to understand what's happening in a cocktail than in a unique substance. Then I will talk about vacuumation and toxicity, you know, there is so many papers now on that. You can find microplastics in all the in all the fishes, basically deep sea fish, lakes, uh, mainly polyethylene and polypropylene, that's true, but anyway. But they are there. Bioplastics as well too, you know. Uh, I believe that plastics we will get really for us, I believe I don't know what will happen in the future, but probably it will be difficult to get rid of the plastics. But uh, but we need better plastics, that's for sure. So we, we cannot continue with a single use plastic. No? And I hope you think about the same, the same line. But I think we will still be using plastics and other type of plastics. Uh, and the last issue is the human health. You know, in the last years, uh, there was this, this paper from the Netherlands that was in, in the newspapers, in the TV, about blood, that now you can find in, in, in a stool sample, everybody can find in the, the body. And recently, with the colleagues, and this, one, this is one of my last PowerPoints, we started to draw the attention about the possibility that the microplastics in hemodialysis in the hospitals, because and when you know, they you are treated with hemodialysis, you make 600 liters per, of water per week, and that means a lot of microplastics. So, as anyway, uh, tentatively, some microplastics in terms of the water, of course. But I mean, today, and the atmosphere also, as well, you know, there's Topics and there are some talks on that and so So there will be a short program. So this is a very general thing, too many things maybe, but it's an introductory lecture so I mean, to give again an overview. We we'll start with the soil terrestrial and I, I put here some numbers which are in fact up to date because I just follow what is recent literature. Well, uh, part of my summer project was looking at all these papers, so it was quite interesting because you, you always learn uh, something and it's very important. So I think. As you know, it is mentioned that the terrestrial environment is expected to increase up to 34, 45 million tons from 2019 to 60. Uh, agricultural soils is 1.5 to 6.6 million tons of microplastics. And in, 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 in ocean surface, we are talking about 298,000 kilotons. So it is expected that the problem on soils will be much, much important. Uh, with the numbers, I also am very careful, especially with the, I know more the water, I, I don't know what the soil also probably is something similar. But the available numbers are sometimes um, based on models. And uh, when you have numbers based on models, be careful, you know, because the models can, can give you uh, some different numbers. Uh, another issue of microplastic research that we should be careful, especially in the south, is that now the recommendation from the water sector is from the the water, is the way water reuse, irrigation. Well, we do work in some areas, everything in way water irrigation, but you know, as much you irrigate your water, much more possibility of contamination of the soil because it is a little bit of microplastics. This will be a matching field, you know, is a problem. In the, in the soil and airborne microplastics in soil and plants that might not take, as we know in the discussion, uh, by, by air or by a soil. So, so there is already quite a lot of things there. Of course, the, you know, the density of the plastic soil is better than the more volatile ones. Agricultural farmers, there's a recent paper in ESMP, published a paper recently that they, they, they made a map of China, you know, in Chinese, when they work with a lot of data. Because there are other people working there, there are many working on microplastics, different big networks. 
So they analyzed 477 soils with uh, 109 cities that they found. Of course, in the, uh, they found up to 3,700 items per kilo. But some people say, and I think there's also like, well, I think that there's actually the program talking about similar issues, they can go, they can go up to 40,000 in the worst case. The agricultural farmers are much more important. Organic farming, we recently, I was quoting this paper in the research that has just been published. The organic farming is also not a problem. Organic fertilizers in China, they contain up to 2.8 to 10 to 5 items per kilo. And they accumulate in organic soils in the, in the future with, with the huge amounts. Uh, they say in the next five years, up to 10 to 16. So the, the organic fertilizer, organic farming, it, it may be another source of microplastics, or at least in China. And that's something that we need to, to take care of. Uh, urban soil, of course, is less. 19 example in China is less. So there are, you know, they are there, and you know better than myself because we work in this area. So microplastic, this is more or less the, the, the data that I took was from the next coming papers. So we have 1.5 to 6 million tons in soils, that's uh, 8,000 in, in ocean surface. So the, the soil is a big issue and, and, and as you already know, said that this, this can be demonstrated, this can be. This is another work that we did with the Chinese on sewage slides. It's another way of, of looking at the, I mean, the, the amount of microplastics. In sewage and lights, it's, it's the risk that we use that the sewage and lights for agriculture, again, is coming to the countryside. This is the recent paper that I mentioned to you, where, where I recommend you to read because it's a, a China, 477 sites in China, in different cities, and gives you the idea where are the main hottest spots in China regarding to the, the abundance of microplastics and the type of, of microplastics. This is another new work that we did with the Chinese that they was also participating on, on uh, farmlands and uh, microplastics in the area of and this is in China, you know, in China, the most developed part of China, you know, there are three parts of China, if you have been, maybe some of you have not been in China, but East China is one of the most developed parts, Shanghai, Nanjing, Zhejiang. This is a very important area. Another one is also Hong Kong, and one to the south, and uh, the third one is Beijing. But most of my co-workers are in the area of Shanghai. And, uh, and here was a matching of very few years ago. They started the proper soil to the matching. How this can, uh, can change the enzymatic activity of the soil. This is the aspect uh, in proper soils in the coastal plains of Grand Jure in East China. Huge amounts, and this is for the first time I saw huge amounts of plastic everywhere in, the, in, the, in this area. So this, the, as you know, China is growing very fast, but they they also, they are using a lot of plastic for everything. And this is, for instance, the proper soil for the irrigation, the, what were the problems with the different types of, of, of fragments, fibers. They have, they have, by the way, Chinese labs working on microplastics, they have all the techniques, from Raman to, to uh, FTIR, pyrolysis, everything. Uh, I, I told you this, I already visited 2017-2018, so that's quite a few years ago, so they are very well equipped. So they can make a lot of, a lot of studies on that. So they had, this area was especially on the side of the agro, agro ecosystems. Uh, and this is the composition on the, on the proper soil and, and what is the type of, uh, uh, how was the, the changing the, the, the distribution of the, all the different uh, phosphatase activities, how was the, the activity, polyethylene microplastics, or polyethylene, what is the abundance and changing the bacterial activity. Of course, at long term, this could change the type of soil and the type of activity, the type of crops, you know. You know that Chinese are very much worried about food because they need to import a lot of food. They cannot produce everything. There are too many people to, to feed. It's 1.4 billion or something like that. So that's, uh, they, they are very worried about that. So basically the changing of the type of soil and that could affect at long term the capacity of the soil. This is the recent paper that I mentioned to you about fertilizers, which I am quoted in the journal of materials, but the East was done by my colleagues in China. And what so showed the problems of organic fertilizers, the amount of, of microplastics. And uh, that's, that makes, uh, let's say, our warrior that, that uh, these fertilizers do contain uh, microplastics in, in future months. And, and that's uh, the continuous use can produce, of course, uh, uh, different, uh, is different issues. That's a very recent slide, but the, the, the work that in, in 
we, we have a project in Saudi Arabia for many years in Saudi Arabia. If you don't know it, they, they, they don't have rivers. They have just waste water treated to irrigate. This is the only water they have for agricultural purpose. So they use this water for everything, for, for the, sorry, for agricultural farms and things like that. So we started to collect soils and we started to look at the, at the characteristics of the soils. This is an early work, this is just a fresh slide that they got recently and the type of soils that we, we do that. So because they are doing continuously irrigation with with, with the wastewater, treated wastewater, we expect that the amount of plastic will be quite important. This is the composition. You have a low density polyethylene, PVCs, uh, different types. This is this work is now being uh, treated and uh, hopefully will be published uh, as soon as we can. But it's, it's, it's quite interesting to see the characteristics of these soils which are being irrigated uh, by wastewater, treated wastewater. But this problem is also come to us because in Spain, I guess Italy and this is South Italy, we, are, we, we, have, we need to increase our water use because of climate change, because of lack of water, that's for sure, at least in the South. And also the plants, we also started to look at plants, and I will give you some more examples of the plants. You know the discussion about microplastic songs in plants, and also here, uh, in, this is some plants in, in, this, in the same area about polyethylene and poly, and, uh, and, and uh, poly, uh, polyethylene and polyethylene with several degrees of degradation. We identify some of them. This is also an early work. There are many white plants in this in Saudi Arabia which are also being irrigated by. by uh, of course, if you have uh, soil, groundwater soil, polluted with microplastics, then you can also have groundwater. That's a very recent example on Korea, where they had uh, groundwater polluted with, uh, with microplastics in, in the Juno of the Dynamite. So I just picked up this example because to see that. Soil is important, but groundwater too, as you know, uh, and as part of the system. No? The, so I think we need to be careful with all this because soil contamination can lead us to this. This is an early work from a few couple of years ago, which also showed the metals and, 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 and the polymers and the microplastics in, in India, obviously the mass of those materials also following the same idea, no? micro TIR and, and metals in, in, in the groundwater. So we have soil fertilizers, soil pollution with microplastics, and then groundwater is a risk, and groundwater is a problem. Of course, I always look at the water part uh, many times, but at least you get an idea. So then, then we move to the marine, which is more what, what we've been working more in, in the last years. Uh, you know, global plastic pollution, there are numbers from, from 400 to 1.2 million tons. Uh, plastic production is in 90 percent of the plastic production is PP, PVC, low, low density. Wastewater treatment plant, they also generate a lot of microplastics per year. Uh, they go to untreated water. Treated, okay, if you are lucky, but you know, we should not forget that in the world, the world we are in the lucky situation, Europe, uh, North America, or North America, uh, Australia, things like that, or other countries, developed countries, but we should not forget that uh, between uh, between uh, one and two billion people, two billion people are without water treatment. So the situation is worse. So seven billion are okay, between six to seven billion, but the rest not. So uh, so we are still in the lucky side of the of the, of the world uh, and wealthy side. So also uh, the wash the wash water of polyester it gives around six million. These are numbers we get to. Uh, the land based plastic to the ocean, that was the work, as I mentioned to you before, there were many estimations by Leo de Ton and others. But uh, we, I will show you a couple of slides. Uh, the first European work that was done in, in Europe on, on the input of the rivers to the sea was coordinated by ISPRA, the University Center in ISPRA, here in Italy, and uh, we measured what, what, how much microplastic was. So globally, we are talking now about between 0.8 to 2.7 million tons per year. In the, in the European side, the input of the Rimmel project it was um, was around 5,000 tons per year. The data. Uh, real plastic, uh, but there is a recent paper published in, uh, in Natural Water, but just maybe last month, that shows, that of course, that we are now under climatic condition, well, climate change, that's for sure, uh, and flooding. We have, we have seen many floodings recently in Greece and everywhere. Uh, when there is a flooding, and they demonstrated in, in Dutch rivers, you will see the slides, they, there is an increase of by 100 times more microplastics in the river. So, 
we should not forget that climate, uh, climate change will, 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 will condition our uh, life in the future. We did some experiments in the past with pollutants, conventional pollutants, and we also know that when there is a flooding, there is a resuspension of the sediment, and the river gets much more contaminated. Uh, well, you don't need, maybe you don't need to be a chemist or an engineer to understand this, you know. When there is big flooding, everything is, is moving from the river, and the, the persistent pollutants are, are floating. Uh, there is an estimation of the plastic particles going to the oceans. So they're floating quite about a trillion plastics. And there is some European, let's say, idea of European uh, legislation or European recommendations of the, from the marine and from the water framework to reduce the plastic liters that go into the sea by 30%. This is a, an idea that, of course, when COVID came, uh, we forgot about this completely because. Uh, we, we use a lot of plastic, especially, for instance, globally, when there was the, the peak, uh, the, the highest, the, the worst situation with the pandemic, we were using 4 billion plastic mas ma masks, face masks per day, every day. So basically, half of the population is using a mask, and not having this mask, some of them incineration, some of them into the, into the landfill. But the funny thing, I want to go to the last point of this slide, is that the first paper on microplastics, not at that time was not mentioned, like was plastic litter, was published in 1972, so more than 50 years ago. Then we forgot completely about the topic. We forgot, and then in 2005 we started, ah, we have microplastics in the sea. But you know, uh, maybe the scientists or, or, or the society is a bit uh, responsible with this, you know, because uh, we knew that the problem was existing already in 1972. And some, some of you were not born, some people, some people in the audience were not even born. Uh, what was also recently, maybe you did not hear about that, but uh, recently, and because of these problems on the plastic, it was recently, it was this in uh, August, uh, in May 2021, it was a big disaster, that we were in the, under pandemic, of course, we did not realize. But they were, um, there was this boat uh, in, in the Sri Lanka coast, the shipping boat that had containers in it and, and was burning. So basically, it was six, uh, 1,680 tons of, of, of plastic pellets, and the plastic pellets were, were being produced billions, around 20, uh, 40, 50 billions of straw, of, straw of, plas of, plas of uh, plastic particles. A big disaster. This was in the CNN, and also there was a few papers in marine pollution bulletin. Uh, we did not hear too much about this in the news, at least myself, so I, I knew because of the scientific report that this was a big disaster. But what I mentioned to you, in 73, we already knew that it was plastic in the, in the, in the base, uh, you know, uh, another one on, on marine pollution bullet in 74. But nothing happened, nothing happened. So this is, this is uh, how it is, you know. Sometimes we are, we are a little bit uh, slow reacting. Uh, this is from the Mediterranean Sea, I don't know if Alexander Sinsinelli was involved in others. This is not, uh, we are from the Mediterranean, there are many samples, there are many problems. And I want to go now here to the, to the project that we, that we did in the, in the European Union on, on uh, floating microliter micro in the Mediterranean. So this, is a, this, is a, this was a large project involving many institutes. And, and the idea was to estimate how much, uh, how much uh, microplastic, uh, how much plastic litter was coming from the river to the sea. Sorry. Uh, here, because we wanted to know if there is any evidence from Italy, I guess you know, Paul was not monitored, I don't know why, probably they did not find out. We had the same protocol, we needed to look at the particles in the, in the sorry, it, what we did is here, for instance, this is what we did in Spain, but in Italy work. This is the list of, of, of items that they were in the, in coming from the river, plastic bottles, plastic bags, packing, things like that. So they were, they were uh, all the other were having the same protocol, and uh, going there every week and looking at the rivers, so it was for more than one year. The third river is Tiber, it's the Tiber in Italy, which is found here, found here is in, the red, in the red color, because red color, red, there are three different colors. The red color means the worst ones, of course, and then we have uh, the Danube, another one, but I guess the Po was, was not monitored because particularly the Po would also be in this. In this. So anyway, this was measured, measured data on, on the Mediterranean, and we could estimate that the 
so that the number, that the total number of of, uh, of, of, of items or of of, um, of plastic going to the sea was around 5,000 tons per year. This is a table comparing other data. Sorry, it's uh, it's uh, other data we have from Leverton and others. The work is the last the last column. The last one is from uh, this paper. The other ones are from the literature as well. So basically, what I want to say is that when people give numbers, uh, you see numbers in literature about estimations and uh, numbers of total plastic going to the sea or to some place, please look at the method that they, they can be using. This is the recent paper on the flooding events. So they, this, these authors from uh, Bagrinian, they, they just look at the, at the mirrors, uh, at the river mirrors in, in, in Holland, and then they, they, they measure the the peak, when there is a when there is a flooding event, then the number of plastics will increase by 100, which is of course has sense, and I think it's important to be, to, to recognize this because the previous paper was not measured under flooding events, was always measured under steady conditions. You know? So I think this is quite interesting because you can see what what can happen when there are flooding events that will be more frequently happening in the next coming years. Of course, we have. The world of microplastics in the sea, and you know, this has been an old thing already now for two years. There are different ways to monitor. You can do it by aerial monitoring, by, by kind of you know, remote, sense, remote monitoring, or you can also have uh, this is called citizen science by different plastic plastic crowds in the beaches. For instance, in Australia, they did um, uh, 10 years uh, evaluation of the monitored marine debris because you know, everybody, NGOs, and and many groups, they have worried already since many years on the problem of microplastics. So they, they were monitoring, they were, let's say, uh, making efforts to with some scientists to see how much the situation of microplastics to go to the beaches to collect that, to collect. It, this has been also in the newspapers for, for several times. So I think it's quite interesting, and, and this is an example of Australia. Moving now to, the, uh, sorry, to another block, which is the analysis. You know better than myself that the analytical part is important, as a central trap tool, and sampling also, by the way. Uh, especially in the water, when you do sampling, different type of net. If, you, if your net is a smaller size, you will collect more microplastics. So there is a lot of things. But going just to the analytical methods, we will see here the list of methods here in the site. It is quite a lot of methods. Uh, uh, um, Microscopy is FPIR, uh, Raman, Pyrosi GCMS, which, which are the, let's say, the most common ones. Uh, this is, I want to give you here an example of what we did in Saudi Arabia. Sorry for this, because it's, here we compared two big cities, well, two cities, Riyadh and, and Al Kubain. And of course, big cities, they get much more. This was wastewater, these are the type of microplastics. And as I mentioned to you, all the water here is, uh, is, is treated, treated with water. Uh, and obviously the, the risk, we evaluated the risk for the, for the ecosystem. And obviously in, in Riyadh, which is 8 million, the other one is less than 1 million people, uh, is more risk. So in general, in general, much more population, much more risk for the environment, and much more risk in general in the case of microplastics. So the analytical part, so yeah. The, the, the way how it looks, this looks like a river, but this way water treated, they, they have huge amounts of water coming from the treatment plant. And, and this is the, the this is the composition, the, the uh, FTIR composition, the chemical composition of the, of the microplastics analysis. So this is one of the techniques. I should say FTIR probably now is the most common for water and also for soil. And recently we in our case, we had uh, we purchased already for more than one year uh, GCMS, and I give you an example of Pyrosis GCMS, which is another uh, another uh, technique which is coming and uh, is there and it's quite reliable. Uh, of course, in that case, when you have a lot of uh, different microplastics, the uh, problem, the density of them, each of them is different, and for the calibration graph, you need to do it by carbon calcium, carbon calcium, carbon uh, because you cannot put it in the water because the density is different, you know. So you need to be very careful how do you do the, the calibration of this, of this uh, when you have a mix of microplastics. Anyway, this is GCMS, which is most of the instruments now we use the same 
idolized the frontier, and then they was using calibration on curves. And, and we, we look at that at this, this particular case in the beaches. This is some of the, the data that uh, was mentioned in the in the beaches of our, of our region, which we chose the, the in some beaches, so the, the amount of microplastics. The, the, the microplastics that we, we put they are visible with the naked eye, yeah? we have to talk to care of this type of microplastics. Just, just to give you a couple of examples of the analytical techniques. But here, what I want to show now here is the uh, paper that was published in the journal uh, already um, two years ago now, or submitted two years ago, and published. It's about the laboratory study, uh, standard samples. Here we have the is Michel or the Pollard, but I don't know if he's in the room, but he, you can ask him if he, when he's here. These are the standard samples, uh, polyethylene, polytapoxylate, poly polypropylene, all the plastics. Here are the techniques. They were 27, 28 labs, expert labs. And uh, most of them, they were using FTIR. Uh, micro, there were few of them. And then only one was using uh, no, uh, Rama. Raman and micro Raman 1 and Raman 3 and pyrolysis 2. And then it's very easy to understand. The green color means good, the other color means bad. So do we see any green? Yeah, we see the green only one lab, only in this case, only one lab, Raman could identify very well all the microplastics. But then when you go to the other plastics, maybe no, low density polyethylene, for instance. You see red colors, you I mean the, the, the red color, the FTIR was unable to identify the pyrolysis also. Well, what does it mean that? This is, this, we are talking here about the standards. So for me, it was is an example of a tarnishing that we are still lacking of an interlab study of comparison. This is, we are talking about an identification of, of, of samples. So I don't know if this has been repeated or published, uh, or this has been soon. Repeated again and, and got better results, but what I saw here for me is an example that we need harmonization. And here I wrote a couple of things which I think is important because this, this problem happened also in the past with other techniques, you know, with other chemicals. Or we need to standardize methods, we need to harmonize inter study in comparisons, fiber, fragment, granules, field, foam. We need to have. Uh, provide size information on microplastics, including smaller size, including distribution, level detection. So there are so many things that we need to standardize that because we want to compare our data with the Chinese, for instance. They are producing so many data, the Chinese. That we should do something, I guess. And, you know, I know you have a cost action. Maybe you could organize something on this. I, I suggest you, because I can provide you the name with the network in China, which is very strong. Because I think we are, for me as a chemist, it's a disaster. So. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, the techniques today, most of the labs, they have macro FTIR. I see many labs are buying FTIR. And pyrosis is in some labs are also. Rama is more difficult, and, but some instruments now, they have both. You can buy some companies, like Simas, so you can buy Rama and, and, and FTIR together. So I suggest that this needs to be improved. And probably, the, as you mentioned, that we have a cost action. I would suggest to do something in this line because, because at least with the standard. Huh? Uh, let's go now to the green part. So you know we are asked to be green, and, uh, and this is uh, green is applied to microplastics. So it depends on the method that you are using. For instance, here I give you a couple of examples. 100% green. When you use sodium chloride, it's it's 100% green. It's 100% green. The density separation of the sodium chloride is, is let, let's say the, the, the best let's say, eco-environment or environmental friendly, when you use, for instance, zinc, second site, then you have less, less environmental friendly. So basically, you need to be careful about your solvent, your products, to be as much clean as possible. This is recommendation. Of course, there is nothing on paper, but it's, it's, and today there are methods that, that you can never wait in the lab. But here I want to put you an example, which is a little bit tricky, and uh, which shows also my opinion about this thing. Okay, we want to be green. Okay, perfect. Which is the green method here? Is the visualization method. So the, the visualization method here, microscopy, the 0.98 is the best one. Green. But then, if we want to know the composition, we don't know the composition of the plastic. Then we need to go to, 
to FTIR or to pyrolysis of to FTIR. So what happened? What is the situation? And then for the two FTIR, chemical digestion is more is more aggressive than 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 CT separation with sodium chloride. So sodium chloride is going to be good. So what is my recommendation? And, and the problem with pyrolysis CMS is that when you have NFZ, you have you plus the instrument, you are less clean. No? You are less environmental friendly because you use energy. So what would be my recommendation? Okay, I would not say don't go for for, for the visualization method because you don't have the you will not have more information. You need to have a method, you need to make a compromise, let's say, to take this method which is uh, more close to the green side, but not, not as bad as the other. So let's say a hundred point fifty degree is let's see the separation with FPIR would be already the best one. Not necessarily we need to take always the best linear method because then because if we are so strict with this greenness, then we will lose analytical capability and analytical information. So we, we should be realistic as well. These are the principles of green analytical chemistry, with uh, you know solvents, many, many questions, automation, miniaturization. This is now a general recommendation of the lab, of the labs. And there is also a journal on that, so there is very much involved in this journal, and there are some special issues that now has not yet impact factor, but if you are interested to submit, you can submit it. So let's move to another topic, which is the absorption of, of microplastics as a absorption of, of cross-contamination or co-contamination, co-contaminants. Co well, this is a very recent paper from a design, it's a very active fellow in China working on persistent pollutants, and for instance, he, well, it's known that micro, hydrophobic contaminants, they absorb uh, B, 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 H, so there is a, a lot of data. He has published a recent paper on that, which shows, again, this co-absorption. What is the situation with pharmaceuticals and other chemicals we have? In the, in the microplastics, we can have different types of interaction, partition, van der Waals, cation competition, tyrosine, for instance, or polypropylene. We can have hydrophobic interactions, polyethylene, tetracycline. So there are so many interactions that, that to understand the mechanism is quite also interesting, and but also we need to, we need to be the hydrogen bonding. So there is quite a lot of chemistry in it and, and interactions. So here, uh, the, we have, let's say, in order to divide this very clearly, is environmental factors, pH, hydrogen, hydrogen ionic strength, the solid organic matter, microplastics, type of polymer is very important, which type of polymer, degree of polyvalibility, surface cells, and then, of course, the, the classical uh, on pharmaceuticals or on compounds uh, like alcohol, like, uh, water, partition coefficient, and, and PK. Here is a, a recent paper, which from China as well, again, we chose three, three blocks. The first one, the first one is the levels in China. So you can imagine in China how levels in China of microplastics and antibiotics and antibiotic resistance genes. So they made a relation between the hot spots where are the more microplastic abundance with the more hot spots where are uh, where are more antibiotic resistant genes and antibiotics. They're from whole China, which is pretty interesting. And, uh, and, uh, well, and they found, for instance, up to 10,000 uh, 10, uh, items per, per cubic meter in some areas, in the Anxia River, or, or in the soil as well, quite a, lot, quite a lot, huge amount of, of I think around 4,000, between 4,000 to 7,000 items per, per kilo. So they make a map, this is a very recent paper on, on that. What, what I want to say with this is that many, many times the contamination of microplastics this is also in sediment, by the way, water and sediment, huh? so solid material, your, your topic. So what I want to say with this is that uh, many times microplastic contamination is associated with other types of contamination. Uh, so that's for sure. Uh, this is another one is an example that we did in our lab, looking at controlled experiments with using microplastics and, and some chemicals, or cytotram, a pharmaceutical. So in that particular case, uh, cytolopram delayed the bioaccumulation of microplastic, delayed the bioaccumulation of cytolopram. It's the blue color here, which delayed the bioaccumulation. So uh, pharmaceuticals and, and uh, together with microplastics, they could have microplastics could have different types of interaction, like absorption in the surface could, could be could be different types of, could be in one direction or another one. So it's, it's important each pharmaceutical will act in a different way because then such a 
acted in a, in another way. So I think this is another type of research that needs another type of research that needs more attention. This is a work from the school Fata Casino in, in Cyprus, also looking at the at the um, uh, contaminants in the in the water uh, in, with microplastics and looking at about the added toxicity or co-contamination, the exposure, and this is really um, mentioned here in this slide. So when we I what I mentioned to you either uh, earlier before, and this I try to make the link between water, soil and plants, uh, we have Microplastics and contaminants exist in this little water, and there is a joint toxicity and traumatic exposure. And what we will have here is that we have, we are having already transfer from soil plant rock by aggregation. This is for sure it's happening in, in minor or less degree. We could have, uh, can decrease or increase the negative effects of contaminants, microplastics, so that the addiction effect will depend very much on the physical chemical parameters that I mentioned before. And there is an uptake of co-contaminants in plants. We could have this as well as an uptake in the plants. And, uh, and uh, this, I'm now getting to the end. Uh, I still have some of them, but. Uh, my commercial toxicity, and I have the because Eduardo asked me <laughs> on Friday, on Friday when I arrived, he asked me, oh, you will not talk about removal. And he said, okay, I have some advice about removal, so I will have. <laughs> Uh, is <laughs> so, my is for sure now is everywhere. Right? My microplastics are in fish, in small crustaceans, in, in uh, nematodes, everywhere. In mussels, there is a uh, with, with Italian colleague, Pastorino, we did, I, I mentioned, I said to him, we could propose a mussel watch because <coughs> mussels are very, in, are very indicative, it's a good organism for verification of, of uh, pollution. By combination, by verification, so we have the muscle watch issue, and of course, the, 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 this could be an, an idea in the, in the sea, but also there are muscles for the fake water. Uh, by availability and sustainability, we also got on Friday with Eduardo a lot about this. ELA has already been there and has been what of decided. ECL, many other ones, EHA, EGA, you know all of them because you are working with him on this area. So, uh, what do the Bible? Polymer byproduct of cereal industries is now is a solution for biodegradable mass biotest. There are many people or industries working on that. Uh, BioRG, which is uh, from sugars, you can produce from sugars uh, this, this type of things. Bio and the Netherlands, there is a company in Avantium working on that and, and producing this type of, of maybe you have more information than, than myself. I have read uh, some reports on that. Uh, toxicity of bioplastics is a, under discussion as well. Uh, they are less toxic, but they are also a little bit toxic. I will show you an example from a fire from the liquid so much time. And then the, the, uh, the, 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 the removal technologies, especially in more of the water area, there are people claiming um, at what scale, of course, they don't know in real plants because we don't, you know, we should distinguish between the cosmos and pilot scale and real, real, real world. But they are planning uh, photocatalytic and microbial technology which are the most popular, which is membrane, most popular sort of technology. So this is in Italy, the like of Italy, in the, this is in the uh, Piedmonte, in the Piedmonte area, uh, like uh, one well, of the lakes, Balma, I think, but Balam or something like that, in the Piedmonte, in Piedmonte, and if not far from Torino. So here you can see areas in the lakes where were in the sediments and in, the, in a, one of the fishes, which is a salmon, the species they have, they found uh, microplastics, mainly the ethylene and the polypropylene, polypropylene, which are volatile. So in the lakes, in Italian lakes, you have, you have microplastics. As I put this slide because they are in the middle, so at least you want to see something from your country. Uh, in the Mediterranean seafood, the recent coast, you can see obviously they have microplastics. And, uh, but this is, this is quite common, you know, they are there, and in the sea, it's plastic nets, I mean, plastic nets, fishing nets, sorry. The material development does I found very interesting because I am an old, I mean, I am an old person, so I have been there for many years. I remember when I was young, it was a muscle watch program on, on persistent pollutants, so I thought maybe we could propose a muscle watch program for microplastics, which would be quite interesting as well to do. Uh, uh, there is a Mediterranean big sea fish as well, polluted with microplastics, so we have quite a lot of things there. 
Caribbean coast as well, well you know, all, all these examples on, 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 on different types of microplastics. When we talk about uh, degradation, and we also talked a little bit with Eduardo the other day, we distinguish between degradation, composting, and certification. And you know, this is not the same thing. And when you want to have complete, complete composting, uh, you should follow certain protocols. If you don't follow these protocols, the material will not be accepted. So and as I understood, this is not yet decided which one of these microplastics, new ones, can not all of them, they, they are qualified to be composted. So one thing is the degradation, the other thing is the composting, the other thing is the certification. So I think we should be very careful when we mention this aspect, but I think you are in the soil and degradation part. You are more expert than myself on this topic, and probably you are already working, and you already know how to do it better than myself. And the removal, I will give you here three slides that I had in my computer. So the slides show that the geochemical methods, manage membranes, membranes, photochemistry. This is from the, again, Chinese, the Fuhe. The Fuhe is one of the experts in China on, on soil with microplastics. He must have been a book on, on agroecosystems. He's from Shanghai. And uh, he's also working on, uh, on, on microbial, on, on degradation, sorry, on, uh, on microbial degradation and, and, and pathogenesis. It was a recent paper published in, in Stratton on, on the different you know, I have seen many papers in different strains trying to degrade microplastics. But of course, all this is at large scale and each laboratory is a different one. Photocatalysis seems also work pretty well for the water, at least because they give high energy and that, that looks something which is working. This paper showed this and the other one from the UK, you see a campus also showed the same that they could, they could remove um, Microplastics and microfibers by a bunch of different processes. No? So I think these are, these are quite uh, interesting aspects. What I mentioned to you before is about the bioplastics, and this is the work from Malafaya, he's a researcher in Brazil who works as a toxicologist, and he's pretty active, publishing a lot on this area. So he demonstrated that the PLA, PLA is also toxic, a little bit, but it's toxic, so it gives some sort of toxicity. He shows the, the PLA on uh, accumulation, that's accumulation on, 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 on people yelling, and the other one is the acetylcholine uh, esterase, uh, increasing acetylcholine esterase, and the acetylcholine esterase in, in, in people yelling. So, what does it mean? That there is not a new material, although we can have a new material, it's not completely free of toxicity. It's better than the previous one but will not be completely free, free or completely free of, of, of that. Uh, yes, I want to fin finalize now the last ones. Last ones that I wanted to put here is the okay, you know, I think there's also a lecture on, on the editing by, by Rana from, from Portugal, sorry, Parata. Uh, uh, Microplastics in the air, and plant leaves, this is also a topic which is uh, there. Uh, Plant leaves can an important role because they can, uh, they can absorb microplastics and it's a sink of them and, and can, they can retain as well microplastics. So microplastics, uh, they are already dead on that, they can penetrate the plant leaf by a foliar, foliar exposure and then going into the stem and then going to the roots. They are, they are, we showed an experiment done by the Chinese again with the fluorescent violin on this topic, which I found recently. The hemodialysis topic, which I was involved in, this is the time by the UK, where they show, they show potential risk. But they, they even they calculate how much from the papers published in the literature, because you know you can go to the literature and see how many papers have been published using drinking water, or microplastics in drinking water, and if you pass 600, 600 liters of, of drinking water, how many microplastics your body will accumulate in the kidney. So they did this calculation, and it's pretty interesting that you, you will see huge amounts during one week, depending on the, on the water. If you look at the paper, you will see how many microplastics. So this is a potential risk, depending on the water. But of course, that means that, and it was also the paper in the Netherlands by Maria Amore, which she showed uh, in the blood. But of the paper, almost in the big papers, one of the big papers. So, People started to get the warrior, but, uh, but as I said to you from the beginning, uh, I think it's not only microplastics that we should be worried, we should be worried about all the other chemicals too, because 
like a party will bring together in the two phase persistent pollutant, will bring PFAS, which is now a topic as well. And they will bring many other things, not only microplastic. And then they, in addition, what, what they have as an additive, like, like Mr. Noe or, or additive, like phthalates. In the, this is a paper which I recommend you to read because it's the especially this list here, which is the density of the micro, different microplastics. Not all the microplastics you can use that way, and then you will understand why polyethylene and polypropylene and all this is polypropylene, polyethylene, which are in the top, are always found everywhere because they have low density. You know? And I think it's pretty important to understand that. This is the, uh, recent, the paper that I mentioned you, they did a fluorescent library in, in a plan of take, looking, looking at the microplastics being sorted with different experiments different days and, and looking at in one case they had a COH polystyrene with COH and polystyrene with the with the NH2 and what they found is uh, when the, when this when this polymers are attached with some other uh, chemical compounds and the aggregation for instance when there is a positive aggregation the aggregation so the aggregation is data when they have a positive uh, linker like NH2 as compared to COA. So, and they, they could trace the foliar take and lift to roof uh, mechanism. Uh, this was published in a solution material, and uh, it's a very recent paper which shows this, this, uh, this, how this could uh, affect by foliar take the, 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 the microplastic, they could affect the plant. You know? And that's quite a thing, uh, another level of, of in your field of uh, that is of interest. Uh, airborne microplastics, I'm getting to yeah, now. Airborne microplastics, what I found in the literature and what is there is mainly in the big cities. And our experience too, because when we did it in Saudi Arabia, we were only in the marine city, where we look at the, the huge amount. So, the, the, as big as the city, as large, there's more, much more. Like a city, Paris, Shanghai, London, Beijing, Surabaya, they have microplastics. Uh, microplastics in the body, this is a paper that I mentioned to you. Uh, well, this is one, another paper about the uh, where you can find a microplastic in the body. Apparently, we did a literature review on for the moment on, to, on toxicology and pharmacology. Uh, apparently, you can find microplastics everywhere. So, now today, many of us will have microplastics, uh, especially the ones that are living in big cities, we have microplastics everywhere, also by the food as well. And uh, this is the one on the hemodialysis. Hemodialysis, uh, and these are the different additives here being used that could be found. I think we'll put the table with, with the amounts that you can detect. But the, the, if you look at the literature for these 600 liters that you can use uh, every that you can use every every week. You can, you can get several thousand of microplastics in your body, so that's something in the kidney. And that's something to be investigated. It's, this is just, uh, let's say, an opinion paper with literature data. And I think the people in the hospital, in, in University College London, now they are working with real, real patients and real samples to see what is, what is really happening, because this will enter another dimension if you need to be careful in the hospitals about the water, and then uh, it's something else. And that's the last one, that, uh, well, the plastic problem, as you know, is a problem of social society. Uh, I know you have a, one day meeting with stakeholders. The plastic pollution is a global challenge. It's, it's something that we need to, everybody is aware. But we, want, we, we need plastic because I mean, we need plastic and we want to have cheap plastic. That's the other thing. And then, uh, well, uh, it's very difficult to get rid of this. and. Uh, and uh, I was happy that by the way that in our hotel, and I mentioned to my wife, all the bottles are, are glass. This is very, very good. No, I in Spain you don't get this. All the bottles are glass. So congratulations. <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyway, I think it's a problem that you know better than myself. We will, especially for the young people, you have a lot of work for PhDs, because I think will be a lot of work to be done. And we will not get rid as soon as, I mean, in the next 10 years. It will be a, a problem difficult to solve and to get rid of it because it's too much and too much use. And we need too much of it. And that's it. And now, well, I'm organizing a conference next month, but it's very short time. We still have to have some apostle. It's pharmaceuticals and microplastics in, in the beginning of October. So in one, in fact, in one month. 
And uh, with this, I would like to thank you very much for, for your attention. And if you have questions, I will take a break. Thank you very much. So thanks a lot, Dami, a really insightful and great presentation, really. We could uh, not have a better introduction, given the wide topics you cover. So we've got time for, um, for questions. So please, uh, uh, anybody who has any, yeah, please. I don't know, you, oh, that's what you're Thank you very much. I'm Salvatore Barbera from Turin, University of Turin. Sorry for my English. Uh, you spoke out, uh, about uh, plant uh, leads of submission and human problem uh, consequence. Uh, do you, can you say something about uh, animal production? Because leads are uh, feed for animals. Do you have some, any information about uh, study or so on? Thank you very much. You mean uh, if, if this affects the animal production? Yeah, yes. Yeah. No, I'm sure that this. Uh, I did not mean about this a good idea. I will look to it. No, uh, I think it, 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 of course, I will affect animal production, for sure. So if this animal lives, it, it's, uh, the fertilizer is everywhere. So it's, but I did not look at the papers on this. But I, 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 and I did not see probably too many, or probably did not see any. But I think it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm working on uh, animal production and uh, microplastic, uh, well, but uh, and uh, I'm interested to know if uh, there are other people working on uh, this uh, because also we didn't find uh, find uh, any personal evidence about this argument. Thank you. No, no, I did not. I did not. But since you mentioned this, I, I will have a look and I come to you if I found that. But I did not personally. I don't know. Anybody, at least animal is terrestrial. I mean, in the marine and in the aquaculture, yes, and all these areas. Yeah, but, but in the terrestrial, it's a little probably not terrestrial, so then I don't know. But it is, obviously, it, will, it's a, it should be a, as well something to be considered, yeah, to take into account, yeah, for sure. Okay. Other questions? One and two. <laughs> Hi, Daniel, this is Sanzo of the Pazan Munich from the University of Padua. Um, I moved lately to Italy from Germany. So back to this question, yes, uh, there are some uh, studies going on with uh, like uh, chicken, for example. And uh, my patient student did that, and we found out that that influence uh, in value between the eggs, the value of the market It's not published yet, but hopefully will be published soon. Um, my question regarding the, do you think that when we do microplastic study and nanoplastic study, personally, I think most of the problem is related to how we do that, rather than uh, we can find or not. For example, in, my, in most of the cases, we find the uh, nanoplastic or microplastic in the blood, but it is really difficult to imagine how this uh, particle could pass to enter the blood. So do you think it's kind of related to the way um, because of the absence of the protocol to follow in a way to keep it free, uh, to, uh, keep it free, and that would be the position of microplastic while performing the study, absence of lack of uh, professional, like uh, skilled people to handle microplastic while you don't have any information about that. So what do you think about that? No, no, well, you put a, a good question. The blanks in the lab, yeah. blanks in the lab, yeah. Of course, you should have, if you have a lot devoted only to microplastics, it's much better, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that could be if there's only a few papers, but there are so many, it looks to me that there is so quite a lot of data on microplastics in, in blood or, or people being affected that, that, that they were not analyzing. But you, are, you say that in the blanks. The blanks, of course, is, a, is important to have good blanks and, and to have, not to dimension of the sample, but uh, I mean, this one, what you say could be a possibility, but the other one is that we are exposed in the, I mean, in China, of these big cities, the, the people is, is the mega cities, there is 
fibers from the laundry activities, there's so many micro microfibers in the in the atmosphere that I'm sure they get this into the blood. It will be almost impossible not to get this. So the contamination in the lab is important. Yeah, to have a lab, if you work a lot in microplastics, to have, or if you start to work in this, to have clean samples, at least if you go at this level of, of if you want to analyze blood and, and very low levels, and you need to be very careful here. Yeah. Like, like you do with other chemicals. I mean, for instance, personal care products, if you analyze personal care products, you, know, you cannot use uh, certain products in your body, you know because it will appear in the instrument, in, in the analysis. So I think it's important, yeah. Blanks, but I'm sure that some data is from the legal contamination also. Yeah, I do, I do agree with you because, well, if you look at the data published, all kind of linked to fiber, why we don't have yeah. microplastic medical. Well, I personally think the nano cell can penetrate. Uh, we did a lot of study. We create barriers, we want to watch them, we did a lot of analytical chemistry behind that. It's really difficult. There are, we consider plastic as a um, uh, like a non-active finding the barrier which is non-active and we study that. But in fact, there are a lot of things going on. Formation of the mucus protein, formation of the things on the plastic, removal, entering the membrane, everything. Perfect. So for me personally, it's extremely difficult to say whether uh, fiber like with having the aspect pressure and with having, having the, uh, the uh, structure of fiber to penetrate membranes that enter the, the block. So, uh, personally, I would say. Can we leave, uh, please, as yes, a question? Uh, Thank Personally, yes. I would say um, a more uh, unregular shape could, could penetrate. What do you think? Rather than fiber, for example. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah, that's, that could be, yeah, that could be, than, rather than fiber, yeah. The, the, well, the, the other issue that we discussed so before with Maria Tarrant, the small particles are not very much studied, I mean, the penetration of the nano, uh, small particles, not everyone has the techniques or the way how to measure this. Uh, so I think it's, uh, this is, of course, we have a lot of information on macro, uh, the last plastic, large particles, but not on the small ones. Uh, this, uh, I have another slide which I have not put it here today, I have an iceberg. And the iceberg means that we still have the one part, which is the small particles, the lack of information. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would also add that we are missing environmental blanks, like uh, in Minagris and Papillon, we are studying agricultural soil, of course, there is no agriculture. We were talking the other day, yeah? you cannot have a control without plastic, it's a matter of amounts. Yeah. There was another question, I think, uh, just from that. Earlier in the presentation, you showed some data about uh, the new uh, addiction model for the amount of plastics that are leaked by the rivers in Europe. And my question here is, is in, in my experience, um, there are only a few labs which can really measure microplastics down to, let's say, 30, 20 or 10 microns or below mm. that. And I think most universities are not yet equipped with, with spectrometers which can go that low regarding the size. And how does this influence your prediction model? So if, if for example, such devices become more uh, prominent at most universities, can this change your prediction model? Or could you also calculate the fact that many of the smaller particles are not measured? No, yes, you are right. I mean, the prediction models are, are they are not able to do, but that's the reason that they have so many mistakes in this model, uh, and on, on, on the smaller particles, and the, the, so I read the papers, and I, I know, uh, it is one well, of my colleagues in Barcelona, by the way, is a specialist on that, uh, at the university, uh, Canals, Michael Canals, he, he wrote a couple of papers on the models, and he told me the mistakes that could happen in the, how you do the prediction, and how you consider the, with which particle size and which which address. So uh, there is other it's not my area. This is not my area first. But I think I am very careful with these papers and uh, I read some of them. I mean I read on another one and, and I saw the discussion that I did not put today in the presentation because it was more a general one on soil, but uh, but there is some contradiction between the models and some but anyway I think it's uh, 
In the beginning, it was, it was done by models because they could not measure. Today, we can measure more, but of course, not, as you said, not many labs can measure at such a level and to make a, a real estimation. So, it's, uh, so for the reason the models are being used still, or yet uh, they will be used, but uh, hopefully will be better in the future, I don't know. Uh, but uh, as soon as they have some data, because you know, the, the, in, the, in the case of the, of the data in the Mediterranean, we had measurements, but they were 700 measurements, I think, or more. Uh, uh, some of these models, they had only 20 measurements. So then, how can you compare the uh, measurements 700? Uh, we need more measurements. If you want to make a good model, you need those two measurements. Otherwise, uh, it's a little bit lacking on you know, this. It's just something weak. It's not validated. You need validated model. In other words. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Maybe a couple of questions more, if it's... Uh... Are there any medication methods related to microbioplastics? Um, and if we can use the methods for microplastics, is that enough for prediction of microbioplastics? For microbiome? So the bioplastic, yeah. Yeah, the bioplastics are being used. Uh, no, I think it's about the microbioplastic. Uh, so if there are some methods specifically to detect microplastic derived from bioplastic, yeah? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm sure, I'm sure you could do it because if you know the polymer is different, you could measure it. Yeah. The polymer, as soon as, it, as soon as the polymer, I did not measure myself, but I, if it's another polymer, you could do it. Because it will be different spectrum or different uh, spectrum. The data will be different. So as soon as the composition is different, you should be able to measure it. You know? That's I'm sure. Is that uh, easy because uh, in uh, um, the composition is not really like I found in this commercial one? It is easier. Well, I think if you have the machines, the instruments, I don't know what I'm looking for. Usually, if you have a bio plastic, they will tell you what is the origin, no? I'm sure or not. In, uh, all that. I didn't see anyone myself bio plastic. I only read the papers. But uh, I'm sure they have many of them are on PLA today. Yeah. PLA is rather known. It's rather known. Can it? It's rather known. So in other uh, bioplastics, they add uh, monomers. So monomers, yeah. 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 What it is? And they degrade the, the monomers to go into the blood. Okay. Thank you. I was listening in a pieces in Almeria in Spain uh, that they were heating up, because before I would talk about food, they were heating up plastics with, with potatoes, and they, they analyzed a lot of polyethylene glycols, for instance, from the degradation of the plastic. So you can, you can play with different instruments with the same. Any other? Actually. Well, I have also one. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's a question since, I mean, you are probably the person in the world that maybe I've been reading, handling, publishing, and so on more on plastic in the last years. So my question is about, you correctly say that it's quite a fashion that could be good or bad, but this means that, that the amount of publications and people working on this is huge, of course, around the globe. So my question is, from your perspective, your point of view, did you think that this uh, led to a sharp increase of our understanding? Because as you said, okay, until 2005, whatever, there was almost no studies, so now there's a lot. And these a lot of studies are giving uh, like big advancements in understandings uh, in the last years. No, of course, uh, you did not understand that from quantity comes quality. I mean, yeah. there are thousand people working in something, at the end of the You get an improvement. So. Let's see, the papers in, I remember in the beginning, well, most 40 per India, everybody in, in the developed country can work because if you have a microscope, you can see a plastic in the beach, you can, I mean, in the beginning it was like that. Now it's more difficult to publish a paper mm -hmm. like that. Huh? But uh, I think we are understanding better, and now people are worried about, uh, let's say, interaction with metals, interaction with organics. I think we are moving a little bit in this direction, also by accumulation studies. Mm -hmm. We are moving in the classical studies of 
of the pool of, I mean, let's say, in the water side, it's very similar to that, what happened with the material. Yeah. It was called chemistry. I mean, and chemistry. And in the soil part, it will be also another one, but in the soil area. So I think, I think we are, we are getting better, better, better results and better understanding or an interest because we think mm -hmm. that, if, if there is funding, of course, also the funding is important. If there is no funding, yes. then there is no reserve. No? <laughs> uh, at that point. But the thing is, uh, it's uh, it's positive. Yeah, it's positive. I think. Of course. Maybe there was also another one. Yeah, I see you. I think. Uh, Christine Fu from for the Agricultural Organization of the United Nations. Um, the studies you were presenting were mainly from uh, China, Europe, uh, Brazil. So basically from regions that have the techniques that are relevant and analytics, etc. Um, are the studies available from from the African continent, um, because it seems, you know, microplastics are everywhere. But the question is just in which concentration is sensible, and whether we have the, uh, the measures, the resources to analyze and to detect them. And um, because that, you know, when you, you were talking about the cocktail and that uh, maybe the major problems might come from what comes together with the microplastic. Uh, the microplastic basically is just as a vector that transports something into your body. Um, and maybe there could be even the, the fact that microplastic um, could prevent the absorption of, of food in your body. Uh, I don't know, it's just a uh, you know, good question. And that might actually be quite a huge problem in countries that are anyway already facing a shortage of food, um, a deficiency in, in calorie uptake, and uh, it might be quite important to also do some research in, in that area. Thank you. No, thank you. You are right, you are right. I mean, the this is the name of this uh, effect of microplastic together with other chemicals is now an Australian effect, which is similar like what happens in nanomaterials. I did study. So it's, they have this strain effect, so they combine it, and as you said, it can prevent absorption, it, it has different effects. So why would there are no studies in other countries? Because there's, uh, they are in Africa, it's difficult, South Africa. Maybe there are some studies in other countries, it's more complicated. I mean, also in Morocco, it could be there is something in, in, the, in the Mediterranean area. Uh, in India, there are some studies, but they did not, they put the one Indian study, I think, on two, India, this area. But this is, of course, the, what happens in, in reality, in general, in the environment and, and, and in general in, in science, that, well, I've been traveling to Africa many times, and if you want to see who has more data available in developed countries. Mm -hmm. If I go to, I remember I was years ago in Egypt, in Egypt or one of these countries, and said, do you have more metal data? I said, no, but the river is clean. There's no data, <laughs> the river is clean. Oh, it's clean because there's no data, you know? Uh, you go to the EPA or the USCS, if you're working in America, there's plenty of data, millions of data. So, okay, you know? Uh, and that's the problem of developing countries. So I think, India is, is catching up a little bit, some areas of India, but the problem is Africa, yeah, for sure. But in America it's also okay. There are quite good researchers in microplastics. So Brazil, I mentioned one, but there are more. Uh, Australia also do. So Africa is a big, big problem. And uh, this is associated with the quality of life, money for research, you know, these type of things. Uh, because Asiatic countries, Korea, all this, they have a lot of research going on and, and, and interest. Korea, Vietnam, all this, they are very active in this area. So it's basically Africa, uh, as you said. And, uh, but this is also related to other studies, like, uh, you know. Uh, one of my colleagues in the UK, by the way, going in this direction, Alistair Boxall, he, what he did is he, he published a paper in, in Penas, 
pues sí, los de la National Academy of Sciences y de American Nancy Tux Centers from All Many Different Countries, que hacen tus analyses en el UK. So, that's one thing that you could do. We can ask, we could create a network, I don't know, another cost international or something, to ask everybody to send samples to different countries, to different scientists, and then to do a, like a, a global study, a global a first screening of what is the situation. That would be, but they need help, for sure. Okay, so maybe there is one from Joana. Yeah. Hello, hello, Dania. Oh, hello. First time seeing you in person, of course. Uh, I'd like to first, first to reply to the question that I have a question for you. Uh, I have a student related with me, he's from Africa, and uh, he's yeah, seeing a lot of litter, like people. They do not have waste management, so we're sending plastic items there, and then there is no trash collection. There is so the street is littered with plastics, and they have these ruminant animals, which is uh, they are created for sustenance. That, that means they don't have big farms. Usually, people have one goat or some sheep, and they eat these animals. And most of the times, there's not a lot of food for the animals to eat. So basically, they start eating the plastics, and this is this seems to be also related to sex because females go to to pregnancy, so they are they have higher energy requirements. So it seems that the, the plastic yes found a lot of plastics in the room of the animals, so they are ingesting these plastics, especially when they are starved. So this is a big problem, I think, uh, because these animals will not get. Uh, as big or fat, and will not produce, produce as much meat as the other animals. So it, it is a problem of toxicology, but also how to feed this human population, which is also suffering with this problem. And here we're, we're talking about big plastics, because they are full of it, but probably if we start looking also at the smaller plastics, we also start finding microplastics. Uh, this is not yet published, so I, I did not bring it here. Uh, but the question I have for Dalia is regarding the hemodialysis study, um, because I spent a lot of time in the veterinary hospital in my training, so I'm very used to, to that part of the medical uh, part of the thing. And I want to ask you if you considered as well in that study all the equipment that are plastics, yeah. because we have yeah. the high UV bags, we have plastic, everything there is plastic. Of course, in the surgery, you also have the the deposition of plastic in the surgery room to have a laminar flow of air, ideally. Uh, but of course, this is not regular for everyone. So you all, can you elaborate on these other plastic sources besides the water itself or the serum or something like that? No, it's a good point. Yeah, it, this is in the paper. Uh, we recommend in the paper in fact, to use uh, standards including change to all the equipment. Sorry, I forgot to mention this in the top, but it's also the, all the plastic during that is in the equipment, as you said. And we, it's one of the recommendations of the, of the study that, uh, that with this equipment you cannot really uh, work. I mean, you will get the blank, the blank is, the blank is already, they are, they are already plastic material. And we recommend the stainless steel to change it to another material like a stainless steel or something. Yeah, you are right. Uh, for sorry, I forgot this to mention. But this is a good point, yeah. But do you think there is anything that we could change? For instance, I'm thinking about an IV bag system where we have the bag, which is generally polyvinyl chloride, with the things inside it, not serum. Uh, usually it's heated as well to be at body temperature, so maybe it releases more. But then you have all the tubing that is yeah. lasting. I, I understand that the bag we could change more easily. But then the tubing, it has to be flexible, transparent, all that. Do you think there is any material that we could change? Uh, or we need to still develop this process? Uh, I'm sure it could be done because we had a similar problem uh, years ago with the analysis of the fluorinated. I mean, you know, the problem was that all the instruments in the lab, the majesty of the they got a Teflon tubing. So we need to replace all the Teflon by other non Teflon tubing. So I think. It could be possible, probably much more expensive, but uh, it's a good point. I mean, uh, some more flexible material or, or that, that is not made on plastic. Which one? Uh, I don't know, but uh, 
uh, that, that's a good question. So the, this paper came because my colleagues in the UK they told me, oh, we are we think about that this is a good idea. And then I, I was called for it. But uh, but uh, the, to change the material is one of the points. So that, as I mentioned, to you this this is uh, the plants in, in the plants and the, the, the equipment. It's it's very important, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. But changing the whole uh, medical part of it. And that's, uh, that's, that's well, getting this new material to every yeah. hospital clinic. And at the low cost, right? <laughs> it's, I think it's a big challenge. No, and then, of course, I think what they are doing now is to look at patients who are hemolysis if they have microplastics in the, in the kidney, because, you know, this is the other thing to see if, the, if there is really a problem or not. I don't know. Uh, this was an opinion paper with uh, looking at the data and because they are working in the hospital now, they thought about that. But of course, if, if they demonstrate that there is a problem, then they will need to do something. But I don't know if there is a, they really identify this as a big problem or not. You know, it's, a, it's an idea, but that, that well, well, we will live in plastic, uh, in a plastic world now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, if we use this metal water for, for, for the patient, then it's, it may be. And, and the other for instance, I didn't mention, but it contains uh, this uh, allogenated in, in a strain with a lot of allogenation, a lot of disinfection by products, yeah. which are, well, with this strong option. So. Yeah. Yeah, big issues to be discussed also. So if there are no other questions, maybe I have a few communication. Yeah, please, sorry. Richard, yes. A, a very general question. Uh, my name is Richard Thompson. I used to work with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Uh, I'm not the, the Richard Thompson from the uh, University. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is uh, that the world is at the moment negotiating a new treaty to address plastic pollution. Uh, what, in your opinion, are the uh, key knowledge gaps that are not being addressed appropriately by the scientific community? Well, that's, that's a huge <laughs> question. <laughs> the last question is the most difficult. <laughs> I, I would like to see, uh, for instance, the real numbers, because I, we are giving a lot of numbers, but uh, I don't know if these numbers are real. You know, but, uh, about global pollution and all this. Many of them are estimated with this first report about models and things like that. So this is one, one issue, you know. This is one, uh, one, uh, one of the questions. And, uh, and, uh, and to collect that the member states, if they can have the collaboration of the member states, that's the other thing, to, to, to tell us the real numbers or some on the use of single-use plastic, how much plastic, what type of plastic, what kind of plastic that they are using for which purpose. Uh, it's very important to go to the source to see what is the problem and then to tackle the problem. Okay? And, and to have these numbers, that, that would help a lot. Uh, I know that during the pandemic, the globes were, were made, because they were not globes in Europe, uh, they were made, I think, in, in, in Malaysia or somewhere in Asia. They made a lot of money because they were the only company who made globes. So I think we should be able to identify where the factories, where are the producers, this for me, before making what scientists will know, we work at Mesocosmos study, little studies, and then we compare with our neighbor and things that we have now, and then we write a paper, and that's it. No? But uh, to have more this global study of what is going on everywhere, I think this is lacking. This is lacking, and, and we need to have the data, to, to get real data on, on production and users and for which purpose and things like that. Probably this is the and of course, still to me, the analytical part is still something that somebody should be put there to, to really initiate a, a, an interlab, a global interlab study, global, not with China, Asia, Africa, everybody. So, because that we're able to compare polyethylene here with polyethylene somewhere and, and how many particles and how many. If we are able to do this in a simple state, I don't want to press something complicated, very simple. No. That would be also interesting. Like we do, this is the basis of the of the change of, of, of goods in the world. I mean, when we 
when uh, some food from Africa is coming to Europe, we, 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 we check the pesticides. So they, and they check it before. Hopefully, they have a lab that they do the checking as well. So then, we just have the same results. That's the same thing. So we should, do this, we should be able to do the same thing with the microplastics. Yes. So. OK. So maybe if there are no other questions, I have a few communication, very fast, of course. But first of all, Dami, I'd like to thank you all to giving us your time and your knowledge. I think it's a little plus with your uh, contribution, starting with the better uh, host pieces, they say. Yeah. So uh, communication now, of course, uh, we have uh, a dinner party where all of us uh, are invited, so we will have more time to discuss and talk, not only of plastics, of course, but in pens. And uh, that's it. We have also Esperanza arrived, who is co-chair. Then, of course, we will do all the thanks, especially Filippo and Francesca, because now they are uh, taking the microphone. But as you know, the people being contacted, they did a huge work on organizing this. So I start to thank because with them and my group, they've been great. Uh, other communication, you know, tomorrow we start our past eight. Uh, as you know, it's very important that everybody who's got a presentation shall either give it to Filippo or the people at the bench, or even just send it to info at agrifoodplus.eu. But as you know, it would be ideally now to have all the presentation for sure for tomorrow morning, even in the afternoon, and then for Tuesday to keep it smart because we, we managed to make uh, other oral presentation. And for the moment, that's it. Again, I thank uh, all of you to be in Piacenza already on Sunday. It's very hot, unfortunately, but it's still like this. And I think we can then go eating. Eventually, go on talking and so on. Okay, thank you.